Welcome to the second episode of our new series, IFRS Reporting Global Case Studies. Our topic today is the IAS2 Inventory Valuation, NRV, Net Relative Value, and Average Weighted Cost, FIFO First In, First Out, and Specific Identification. A three largest global producers in the will be our case study today. IAS2, Inventories, is an international accounting standard that sets out the requirements for the valuation of inventories. IAS2 requires that inventories be measured at the lower of cost and net realizable value. Net realizable value is the estimated selling price in the ordinary course of business less the estimated costs of completion and the estimated costs necessary to make the sale. IAS2 also outlines three acceptable methods of determining the inventory cost, including the specific identification or SPID that are used in some cases, the first in, first out, FIFO, and weighted average cost or AVCO. Let us start with the FIFO or first in, first out. I have included IAS2 paragraph 27 as a reference for you so you can read it. On the left you will find the stock register that show three types of movement OB or opening balance, the beginning balance. GR or goods receipts or the purchases quantity and GI or the goods issue which mean the sales quantity. Now we need to calculate two things. First thing is the COX or cost of goods sold in column Q and the value of end stock column T in column F. I have used the month function, the Excel month function, to extract the month from the date in column M as a number, as you can see. Then I classified the data on monthly basis, as you see, in column N and O. The goods received data I have extracted by using XLOOKUP function, as you see. To understand all these important Excel functions, you can watch the other series of episodes on my YouTube channel, but today we need to focus on the IFRS reporting. The same X lookup function I used also in column P for the goods issue. Now let's calculate the COGS in column Q. According to IAS 2 inventory, FIFO method assumes that the first items of inventory purchased are the first items sold. The cost of the first items purchased is included in the cost of sales when the items are sold. So, the 200 units that sold on 4th of May are calculated 100 units that related to the opining balance on the 1st of May, then another 100 units from the 400 units purchased in 3rd of May. The method will be applied for the 400 units sold on May 11th and the 100 units sold on 20 of May. Also, will be applied for all other quantities sold in June and July. The end stock quantity in column S is equal the open balance quantity plus the goods receipts minus the goods issue. The cost of the end stock in column T is equal the open balance cost plus the cost of goods receipts by multiplying the quantity by the unit price and deduct the cost of goods issue or COGS. In cell V14 and Y14 I made a check formula to ensure the correct calculation of both COGS and cost of end stock. Again, to understand all these important Excel functions you can watch the other series. Especially our series of Excel for FPNA and cost management on my YouTube channel, because today we need to focus on the IFRS reporting. 
Now let us see the second inventory valuation method, AFCO or weighted average cost. Based on IAS2, this method calculates the average cost of inventory on hand at the end of each period. The cost of sales is calculated by multiplying the average cost by the number of units sold. Column A to B include the same data and Excel functions that I have used with the FIFO sheet. To calculate the cost of column Q or the COGS, cost of goods sold, we need to firstly to calculate the cost and the average unit, unit price, the average unit price of the end stock columns T and U. The, the average unit price is simply calculated by dividing the cost of end stock column T by the end stock quantity column S. Now back to column Q of Cox. For example, Cox of the 200 units sold on 4th of May are calculated by multiplying the 200 units of sales by the last average unit price. In this case, the average unit price at the end of 3rd of May. Now, we will do the same for the 400 units sold on 11th May and the 100 units sold on 20th of May. Also, we will repeat the same methods or the same calculation. Uh, for all other quantities that sold in June and July. Once again, to understand all these important Excel functions, you need to watch our other series, especially our series of Excel for FP and A and Cost Management in our YouTube channel of Ask the Experts. Now the third method of specific identification or SBID. Based on IAS2, this valuation or measurement method identifies the cost of each item of inventory and includes it in the cost of sales when the item is sold. This method is appropriate for items that are segregated for a specific project, regardless of whether they have been bought or produced. Also, this method is most used for inventory that is unique or has a high unit cost. On the left the stock register and the sales order schedule. In column E the PO or the purchase order number for each quantity purchased. We've three sales order in column I, and these sales orders are distributed according to related purchase orders. For example, the company decided to sell the 220 units of sales order number 1 as follow. 50 units sold from PO1. 150 units sold from PO12. And 20 units sold from PO13. To calculate COGS in column S cost of end stock in column W, we need first to calculate the unit price and total cost of each order. Let C column O and P. We'll use the unit price of PO1 for the 50 units sold from PO1. Also, the unit price of PO12 for the 150 units sold from PO12. And the same for the 20 units sold from PO13. Now apply the same method for sales order 2 and 3. In row number 26 you'll find COGS and total quantity of each sales order. Now in column S weave the COGS amount for each order. In column U weave the cost of available for sale quantity which is equal the cost of goods receipt minus the cost of goods issue. The end stock in cell W16 is calculated by deducting the COGS in cell S16 from the total purchase cost in cell P16. Another very important article, article by our IFRS expert Sylvia is included in this sheet to make the example easier to understand. 
I have presented as an Excel sheet with links and Excel formula calculation. Also, by clicking on this image, you can read the full article. Now, what is the NRV or net realizable value? And how can it be calculated? I would invite you to see this important example that was included in the examiner's report for the ACCA paper FA2, maintaining financial records for CBE and paper exams covering July to December 2013. According to IS2, inventories should be evaluated at the lower of cost and net visible value in RV. The cost of inventory should include all costs of purchase, including taxes, transport, and handling, for example. Net of trade discounts received in RV is the estimated selling price. Again, in RV is the estimated selling, estimated selling price of the inventory after deducting the costs of compilation, such as sales commission and shipping costs. Also, the cost of further repair may need before sale in case of damage inventory. Let us see my example to understand this. In column B, the inventory items. In column D, the year-end cost or the historical book value and under each inventory item you will find the percentage of the damage or lost inventory at the end of the value. For example, after the year end inventory count, if we make inventory count and found some inventory are damaged and others are lost. So we need to write down this inventory cost. Okay? The percentage of obsolete inventory and the remaining inventory also. By multiplying this percentage in column F, you can calculate the sub cost for each percentage. The NRV in column I is equal to the estimating selling price in column H minus costs of completion in column G. In column K, you will find the inventory valuation or measurement that should be presented at the year-end financial statements. As according to IAS2, it is the lower of cost and the net realizable value in RV. So, I have used the F function, F Excel function, and min, which mean minimum. For example, in row 5, the NRV, of seven, 7 million and $150,000 is lower than the cost of $8,750,000. Now let me quickly show some case studies of how the global companies or group presented their data based on IAS2 inventory. Our first case is Halsam, a global building materials producer. In its integrated annual report for year-end 2022, you'll find that inventories are stated at the lower of cost and net realizable value. Cost is determined by using the weighted average cost method. Also in year 2021 report, you can find an example of the application of IAS2 that requires the cost of inventories that are not recoverable must be written down to their net realizable value. The second global case study is Heidelberg Materials. In its annual sustainability report 2022, inventories are measured pursuant to IAS2 inventories at the lower of cost and net realizable value using the weighted average cost method. Also, they are reporting CO2 emission rights under the raw materials and consumables, and this emission rights are subject to write down in the event of impairment. Don't worry, I will try to make another episode for the CO2 emission rights accounting. The third global case study is Arcelor Metal. 
Again, inventories are carried at the lower of cost or net realizable value, and the cost is determined using the average cost method. With table to disclose the inventory and the movement in the inventory write down. I am so sorry if today's episode was longer than 10 minutes, as usual, and I will try to do a second part to discuss more details of IES2 inventory applications. With me for another accounting standard and global case study. Goodbye.